just, 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 just saying, fiber, uh, fiberglass is a bit heavier in the water. And you know, and uh, these big canopies, they act like a bloody sail. But um, what an attractive looking boat that is. Um, so you've got a paint job up here. Put a nylac coating on there. That is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Right, so then we go to, a, I mean, that's the expensive range. That's the expensive range, the Warrior. Warrior and the um, McLay. You can then go to sort of a um, more of a budget sort of range, second hand. If you just if it's your first boat, I wouldn't go too berserk. Something like this would be quite good for a first boat. The key key ingredient is having a decent, reliable engine. Something you can really can rely on. I mean, I like to think that you know that's nice to have a secondary engine in, in an emergency and stuff like that, but. Sometimes that's just nice to know that you've, the engine you've got with the boat is, you know, you're su super sort of um, confident with it. And a four-stroke and something like Yamaha offers real good reliability. It's serviced and there's no, no major faults with it. You know, it's identified at the service and you'll be all right. But that looks like that's in really good condition. When you're um, when you're buying a boat, you want to definitely go out for a spin in it if you can, um, or you want to see it sort of tank tested or t um, run with a, with a hose. Make sure the prop sort of spins round. Um, there's a shaft in here. There's a pin here. Pin, pin there. There's a shaft in there. If this has had a clout of some d description, you know you don't want this to be bent. So you want to make sure the prop's got no no chips in it or anything like that, and make sure that sort of it's not bent and it's spinning round. Okay. Engine spits water. Make sure the skeg has not all been damaged off. Sometimes you will see these which have been sort of um, snapped off. Or filed, what it is, it's someone's been they've forgotten to lift the engine up when they're on the on the on the on the on the on the ramp, and they've, they've you know so things like that is a is a clear sign that the previous owner weren't they didn't have a bloody clue, so just be mindful when you're picking up a boat off a previous owner. There's two different types. There's the owner who really takes pride in it, is really methodical, um, and how he operates it and takes his time to sit there. And you get other people who are just um, are clueless and um, they'll just you know. Let's say they won't top up, top up a two-stroke with oil. Um, you know they won't bother doing the maintenance on it. They'll damage the boat. You know all all these sort of things. So be be very mindful. You know do your research and um, you know it's um, the old saying goes: a fool and his money are soon parted. Um, so anyway, so that's got a um, this is a this is a bracket for a secondary engine. So that's quite solid. Transom that is there. That's not bad, is it? Um, so this is a Sea Raider. That's actually quite solid. It's a solid, solid, solid little, little boat. This one. I've never even sort of seen one like this before. A bit flimsy there. Not too bad though. The Seeker Flex. If you just want something just to pick ten top ten holiday park, it's got written on it. Look. So he's been on holiday in. Um, He's been on holiday in. Um, he's been on holiday somewhere. So this has got nice high sides. I tell you what, you do a lot worse than um, th a boat like this for your first boat. Wouldn't be too expensive. You're probably looking at about 15 grand plus. Um, it's probably sort of early 90s, something like that. It's a gorgeous little boat. Um, got a nice, fairly newish sort of four-stroke 60 on it. Be quite fast. Ideal just for doing a little bit of anchoring for snappers, not too far out. Just want to get in the boating and just sort of be out there doing it and then doing a bit of fishing without busting the bank. And you'd have just as good a day's fishing if you knew if you knew what you were doing than you would if you had something like that with a hang on, 300 horsepower on it. So um, a little gem there sitting there. Now these sort of things are quite interesting. DNA Alloy Boat New Zealand uh, 420 HSD. And um, yeah, it's not a bad. It's a little bit. Um, it's a bit like the Stabby Craft, um, but it's uh, yeah, it's not a bad. Um, it's not a bad little little boat. That's a two-stroke, thirty Yamaha, uh, long shaft. Uh, it's um, the handle on it. It's not actually. It's not actually long. You can get an extension for this. So, and you've got a little bit of a Tiflex pad in there. Stop it from sort of, that's a good idea. 
else have we got down there? Yes, thanks mate. We got a, um, a little bit of um, seeker flex around there, splodged in around there. You might want to put a little bit more, more around in there. Little scuppers there. Um, this is to fix the um, the fuel tank. Now these sort these sort of these sort of boats, if the conditions are um, calm, sell so battery down. Battery's all right there. That's a picture of Mela. Hello. Um, so yeah, so I don't know what this is here. This is sort of a little bit of sticky tape on on, on there. But these sort of things, I mean, it's got a nice it's got a nice um, bollard at the front here to tie off. Here. Quite fast as well. And a little lightweight boat like this, you wouldn't want to be out in too rough weather in this. Um, but if you just want a, you know, a day sort of fishing where there's plenty of fish, you'd have a lot of fun in this. Um, so it's light, easy, easy, easy to tow. Um, you wouldn't have to worry about it too much. My only, my only concern is with with boats. When you've got a little boat, you always want a bigger, a bigger boat. And I'm not being funny. When you're out at sea, if you've got a like, commercial boat that comes past you at any sort of speed, the wake you get off that boat can be quite intimidating. And a little 420 like that, this DNA 420, would, would um, yeah, I wouldn't want to be in, in that boat when you um, come across a wave coming off a commercial boat. Um, be quite dangerous, I would say. You'd want to almost turn, your, you'd have to turn your bow into, into it. So you'd have to pull the anchor up or cut the anchor off and and just put point the bow into it. Otherwise, you you might capsize. It's um, see, they're not they're not that safe. These these little boats, they're all right if you're in a little sheltered bay, um, around some islands, close to close to shore. But they're um, you really really really, it's nice to have a bit um, a boat with a big boat feel, um, like something like this. But you're looking for, you're looking at a lot of money for something like that, mate. A lot of money. A lot of money. So again, you got um, this is a good package. This one here. This is a two-stroke, so you've got a nice prop on there. Nice nice prop on there. Looks hardly used. This could even be a brand new engine. Well, oh, no, it's not. It's got scuffs on it there. What's it say on it? It usually tell you how old they are. Mine had a little sticker on it which said um, the age it was built. They're sort of doing away with that now. But anyway, again, this is by Fireglass. And this is, a, again, a... Like it's, 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 a day, it's a day boat, but it's bloody good quality. Good quality. Um, so yeah, one thing I'd say about boats in petrol stations, just be mindful of bollards around the actual kiosks and thing. When you when you pull a boat into, always give yourself a bit, take your time and pull yourself a little bit extra space. Better still, don't don't fill up the boat in a petrol station. Get some um, portable um, filler filler tanks. And just sort of topping up. Um, this is a um, that's another ski pole there. And um, fiberglass. If you do scuff your fiberglass, it's still fairly strong, and you can probably sort of patch repair it, or might not need to do a repair. As we're aluminium, this is like three mil here. Aluminium. You you, you hit a bollard with something like this, you're gonna you'll dent it. It'll push it in. So you've got to be mindful. You've got to be mindful of all that, all that sort of stuff. For me, if you've got a decent boat, keep it the fucking hell out of a petrol station, and just um, fill up, fill up for fuel at the marina or something. Um, just trying to think what else we got? We can have, go and have a look at. So have a look at one or two other ones. So you're better off um, if you've got the money to buy brand new. Fair enough, but you can still get an absolutely amazing deal. And save yourself a ton of money by buying second hand. Another good one here, Five Glass Dominator. Well, a company who's been around for absolutely donkeys for years. They're basic, they're basic, but they've been they're, they're nicely they're nicely done. Take the family out, picnic, you know, gorgeous and this, and, and super quick as well. This is a two-stroke, so you got to buy bloody two-stroke oil. But um, you know, this just got single. Um, trailer there, spare wheel there. Always have a spare wheel. Always, always, always. These are heavy duty tyres. These are specials. Alright, so when you have to get a new tyre, you're not just buying a car tyre. This is an actual 
trailer tyre and that's a lot more heavier duty, a lot stronger. Um, so what else have we got? Some other, there's a tandem look, what's that got there, rollers, it's not got a keel, keel. see my boat's got a keel you see. Um, so this is a 200, this is a 200. Spare engine bracket. You'd like to think when you got a 200 Yamaha, you'd think that'd be reliable. You wouldn't need a fucking spare, but it depends what you're doing. If you're going, if you if you're racing offshore, you know, yeah, you just never know. You never know. It's um, you got to be a bit careful with all that sort of stuff. Um, what we got down here? It's rock solid. See, that's your sounder there. Screw an inlet. He screwed all these holes into the transom now that's obviously a composite or, so, or something but years ago i mean there'd be plywood behind there and screwing in here then water would get in that rot all your bloody transom um plywood has just been bitten by something i think it's got all them bungs there it's got three bloody chamber bungs there it's quite low but uh yeah yeah, I don't think I would have wanted to put all them screws in there, really. There you go. There you go. He's talking a lot of money. They're nicely done. They're nice, they're nice boats. They are nice boats. They are nice boats. I'm sure we've got 150. Yamaha 150. You're talking a lot of money here for these sort of things. Talking a lot of money for a rig like that. You'd have a lot of fun in a rig like this, but they don't actually get that much use. This is what this is the trouble with boating. Boats don't get get fuck all use. I mean, you people whinge about spending a lot of money on a car. I'm like, well, you know, what, what, what? How often do you use it? You use the fucking car every day. Don't 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 feel guilty about spending money on a um, on a car because um, you're in it every day. But a boat. A boat costs, well, you could argue it's like buying a brand new car, really. Times, well, it depends what you go for, times two sometimes. But, you know, they don't actually get, they don't actually get um, that much, um, they don't actually get that much um, use. That's just the problem. This is why I keep saying that if you, you know, just second hand, if you're retired, if you're a retired fella, oh, I'm getting some bloody get bloody some skin cancer on me at the minute um, what have we got here Mercury 150 what's that there Mercury Inertia Inertia 150 nice nice sort of nice sort of boat there let's see what else they got in there how much juice have we got I've still got two bar on there 30 minutes let's just see what else we got in the showroom here He'd probably come up to me and say, oh, don't film, don't film any. So we just have a little, Let's see what's in the shop here. I look a bit of a brat walking around with this, but I don't care. What we got here? Oh, this is a nice boat. Look at, that look at the galve on the trailer, look. Oh, look at this, look, this is beautiful stuff. I think these are made of Aussie, these things, look. These beautiful little anchors, look. And the welds on there, look. Yeah. Stabby craft. 115, this is a nicely balanced boat. Look. Cool, yeah. Hello, this look, there's plastic on there, look. And caution, do not overfill fuel the tank. Do not store with a with full tank. Always store boat level. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Good. I'm just having a little look. Just a little a little look. Lovely boats. Definitely. Recording for Oh just my little YouTube channel thing. Just so I can um just so I can have you know, play it back and have a little look just for a little bit of amusement. No one watches it anyway. Right. Okay. Um But uh yeah, no I sort of I've got a boat in Oz. Um and I'm sort of um it's on the market, but if it doesn't sell, I'm probably going to ship it right. to Nelson. Okay. Um, we're in the process of sort of, it's got a keel, it's got a keel on it. And um, he quoted me, the chap at the uh, marina in Adelaide, 
this like a centre like this. He said seven grand for a second hand trailer, but I didn't even have a look at it or anything. And he said eleven to thirteen thousand dollars for a trailer to go with it. Yep. So I mean that we might have to buy one of them trailers and then there's a company called Willship who'll ship it for me from Melbourne or no Adelaide to Nelson for four thousand nine hundred dollars that's pretty good which i thought was pretty yeah, good yeah and um i think i got the boat for quite a good price as well how big's the boat 22 foot what sort of boat is it it's a um it's just a, a diesel um shaft drive it's, oh, okay. it's a steber steber craft 22. right it's about 1800 kg so mm -hmm. it goes on a trailer um it's in the marina at the minute but um be a nice boat for the sounds Weeke yeah. A weekend yeah, for the for the we'll for the, the sounds, yeah, yeah. So I um, I don't know what Nelson Marina is like. That's run by the council, isn't it? Because I had a boat with uh, Havelock, and that were really nice. Yeah, better off in Havelock. Honestly, a boat like that big, getting that boat round from Nelson round to the sounds, it's going to be not the best sea going. It's slow. It's too slow. Yeah, it's going to be just, yeah, so the seas are going to outrun it. Um, so you're going the to sounds, yeah, so sounds be good. Kennepanu sound is, is yeah, nice. I know Nelson pretty well, and, and rough seas up there. I wouldn't have a boat like that in rough seas up there. You would, you wouldn't be happy. You'd be a very not only would you uncomfortable, you you wouldn't feel safe. I don't think you would be safe. <laughs> um, we're in no, I can believe it. I can yeah, believe it. Adelaide local is, knowledge. Yeah, well, Adelaide's got very shallow bay. The fish, the fishing, the fishing's crap. Yeah. They've got a, they've got a, a three-year snapper ban they've just imposed. Have they? Yeah. I was over there earlier this year and everyone just fishes just out because it's all shallow water. You know. I, 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 I didn't, I didn't like it at all. I went in the tackle shop there and he said the fishing was great and I, I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, and then this boat came up and it was, he wanted like 30 grand for it or something. I got it for like $24,000 and um, I was just like, well, if I don't buy it, I'd be stupid. And, um, and yeah, but the, the fishing was, although it was winter time, but I was just, no, the, um, the minister went on the news and he said, um, oh yeah, we, and you're not going to have your, have your snapper ban now for three years. And I'm like, well, that's ridiculous because the, um, the, um, the daily take for snapper was like eight daily. It was too many. It was too many. Because I, I fished the Marlborough Sands, they had problems up there and they reduced it down to like, before it got really tits up, they, re they reduced it down, but the Aussies just kept it high, yeah. and then they've just said, no bollocks, you, you're not having any snapper. Yeah, they should just do eight, eight fish per 